What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, November 15th. Welcome to this exclusive video for pro members. We're going to talk about who got caught being hot in the community this week. We're going to talk about all the alerts. We're going to talk about our current positions. We're going to, I want to discuss uh, trading iron ducks in a low implied volatility environment. Been some discussion about iron ducks in the community this week. So I want to address some of that. Uh, looking at the earnings next week and then just what's going on in the market. All right, let's jump in. Who got caught being hot this week? Uh, this week goes to uh, a member who's been, ar been around in the community for quite a while and just consistently adding value, consistently posting suggestions. Uh, he's, he's one of our Canadian members, so really helpful in helping those who have specific questions that are relative to, uh, to uh, if you live in Canada. So congrats, Gerald Pang. Appreciate all your contributions. Keep up the good work. You got caught being hot. All right, let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting with Monday the 11th. So our first trade was a rolling adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So we had already rolled one of our sets of short strangles. We had one left. Uh, it was down to 14 days to expiration, which we typically like to start looking at potentially rolling those around 21 days, but it was just sucking out the premium. So just kind of let it sit for an extra few days. Uh, but it, we, we just rolled that from uh, December with 14 days and rolled that out to January with 45. Kept the strikes exactly the same. So now we're holding both sets out in that same cycle. So let's go to Natty Gas. And man, what a ride this Nat Gas has been. I mean, just huge swings, but it keeps coming right back to center for us. So it's been good on our front. Uh, so here's where we're at. Here's, uh, we share the three put on the strike for both of these. Then we've got the 2.3 call and 2.35 call. So pretty close to being the same thing. Uh, they're both inverted. You can see prices hanging out right here. So since we've rolled both of these, made up an additional almost 750 bucks and still just working our way back after that massive uh, move that we had when we initiated this position. So working our way back nicely in Natty Gas. Next trade, opening trade in forge slash 6B, the British pound. Implied volatility continues to stay high, so we wanted to sell some premium to take advantage of that. So here's 6B, uh, pretty close to where we put it on. Not much movement at this point. You know, implied volatility is continuing to stay high because of the the whole Brexit thing. Uh, some new, new stuff coming out about that and potential, potential closure to that, it sounds like. Um, but whatever it is, it's giving us the chance to sell some premium with that high implied volatility. So that is all we care about, my friends. Uh, so that's where we're at on 6B. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So we rolled one set of our short call verticals in the Qs. Uh, just adjusted our strikes to accommodate that, get back into a positive theta position. We've continued to roll these just to keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio. So if we look at those, here's both of them kind of put together, but you can see prices just inside of our range. And man, this, this market has just been incredibly, incredibly strong. And so, and we've, we've discussed this a little bit the last couple of weeks and, and in the community. And that is, I mean, you know, we, we always talk about carrying short Delta, but when you get a massive rip higher like this in stocks, it just continues to hit new all time highs. Uh, that short delta hurts, but you know the fact is that we are able to carry this short delta, and we're still we've still been profitable through this up move. You know that sa that says a lot. Now, are we as profitable had we been long or not had that short delta? No, absolutely not. But hey, you, you can't you can't trade in hindsight, and so we will continue to carry a little bit of short delta to help protect from those downside moves, and it will come. You know, when, I mean, when you go through something like this, it seems like it's never going to go down again. I mean, we, we haven't seen a downtick in a month and a half in stocks, but it'll happen and just, you know, stay mechanical, stick with the program. And to give you an idea of where we're at on our short Delta versus Theta is um, the short. So we're about two, a little over two to one on our short Delta beta weighted to SPY. Uh, on our uh, short delta versus our theta. So 
we're in a good position. We like to have a kind of a range of anywhere from one to one to five to one. And, you know, any, when you get a big move like this, a lot of times it's easy to get overly short. And we've done a really good job in our portfolio of not getting too short. Part of that is the implementation of the iron ducks and utilizing that strategy in, uh, you know, mixing in our portfolio. And then the other is, is just kind of, you know, tweaking and managing and, you know, rolling cuts down on Delta and, and all the different things that we teach. So we've done, done a good job of not letting that uh, short Delta get out of hand. And, and it, you know, we're a little over two to one on our ratio. So we're in really good shape uh, and in a good position to, you know, take a little bit of a, uh, uh, of a pullback of a downside uh, if, or I should say when it does happen. Next trade was an opening trade in Amazon. So we put on an iron duck in Amazon. Did this one with 11 days to expiration. And so we're still in that. Price has come down since we put that on. Oops, Amazon. Uh, you can see price has, has come down some since we put this on. Uh, so you can see price is just starting to enter our duck head. Uh, I, had a, I had a question from uh, one of our newer members in the community saying, you know, we've, we've been in this, we've only got until next week, you know, today's Friday. So this expires next Friday, the 22nd, we've only, you know, it's, it's in the duck head area. Why are we not showing barely any profit? And the reason is, is because, and the reason that we put these on with such short time frame, such short duration, instead of that typical 30 to 60 days is because the way that this is positioned, the way these options are priced and the way this is skewed, uh, a lot of this profit doesn't come in until the last few days. And so that's why we, you know, we, we don't want to be sitting in these for 30 or 60 days. So we, that's why we kind of position these between that one and 21 days to expiration. So we can just hold them for a shorter period of time because a lot of that profit will start to come in, in the, um, in the last few days. If you're, if you're in toss, you know, one of the things you can do, and I think Tastyworks has this feature too, but their analyzed tab is, is definitely not what tosses is. Uh, but you, you know, today's the 15th. So if you take this through time and just tick, you know, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, you can see how that P and L line moves as you get closer and closer to expiration. And, you know, this is, this is, you know, the last day and you can still see there's some, some, some meat in there as far as option premium. And then obviously, uh, after exp expiration, it, it follows the teal line. But anyway, that's, that's how that works with these iron ducks. Uh, let's see, let's go to our next trade opening trade in Tesla. So we did another iron duck in Tesla. Uh, Tesla has actually moved higher since we put this on Tesla has been on a real tear. Um, and so here's what that looks like. We're up well within our duck beak in Tesla. Um, you know, some, some, I've noticed a lot of some mem not a lot, but some of the members, you know, it gets into the beak and you're actually uh, you know, your PL line is above that beak. They're just taking it off and booking that profit. And hey, if that, that's kind of what your trading plan is, great. Um, for us, we like to leave these on. I'm going to set my price slides to break even here. Um, we like to, and this is 11.23, make sure I got my calendar correct. You know, we've still got, what I like to do is I, I like to bring that price slice over to just as it would enter the you know, outside the duck beak into the head, you know, we've still got a 27% probability that price could go down here between now and expiration, you know, so we're going to keep this on. If we get down to a point where we have less than a 10% chance that price can get into that duck head, then we're just going to close it out and book that beak profit. But we're going to go ahead and hold on to this one for now. This one, just like Amazon expires next Friday. So we've got a week left, so we will see what happens. Uh, speaking of, I want to point out to Big Willie in our community, who's always uh, engaged, always always contributing. He uh, he sent out a, a a notice that he found a reverse iron duck in Tesla, and I'm going to bring it up right here because I think it was a great great find. You you don't typically find reverse iron ducks in equities because usually the puts trade richer than the calls. But in the case of Tesla, the calls are currently trading richer than the puts. And so Big uh, Big Willie brought it out that uh, he found a potential reverse iron duck. And uh, it was a good one. So I, I put on something similar. Um, let me pull, I put it on in my other account, but let me pull up what I actually put on. And um, so even, even in the next week, you might be able to find something similar or hopefully you saw his post in the community. Uh, but here's what I put on. I put on the 
short 367 half puts, long 365 puts, and then the short 385 call, uh, long 400 call. So it looks like this. So if we bring our price slice over to break even here, and this was out in the uh, uh, December 7th is the expiration here. So if I change my calendar here to December 7th, oops, went a little too far there, December 7. So you can see a little over 86% per probability of profit. In this case, with the reverse, we have no risk to the downside. And we'll take this off if price gets up to here, up to our, uh, you know, our break even, or you know, close to what equivalent uh, is of our of our max profit. So, good find, Big Willie. Nice work. I love all the duck hunting going on. It's good stuff. Um, all right, next trade. Uh, by the way, if you want to learn more about that reverse iron duck, we talk about that in part three of the iron duck course. So you can check that out. Next trade, opening trade in EWZ. Uh, EWZ had a real nice spike in implied volatility, and so we put on a short strangle in EWZ. Uh, if we take a look at where we're at now, we've got about 70 bucks, 75 bucks in profit since we put this on. Uh, but just holding, waiting for some more time to pass, waiting for some more theta to decay. We got in here when implied volatility popped up, and then now it's contracted nicely. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see what happens in EWZ. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is our long put vertical that we're holding for that short delta exposure. Um, this one was basically all the way out of range. And so we just held it all the way down to one day's to expiration because you can't get assigned on futures. So we were just holding it just in case we did get a snap back to the downside, but it didn't happen. So we went ahead and rolled this out to extend duration, keep that short delta exposure, rolled it out to 36 days to expiration. So if we take a look at ES, again, just like everything else in the equity markets for the most part have been strong. Uh, but here we are, you know, so price has moved up a little bit since we put this on, but we're still in range, just holding this for some downside, potential downside in stocks. Next trade, closing trade in RUT. So we had a, a weekly double calendar on in RUT, and uh, we we're down to the last trading day, and we're hoping for a little bit of an uptick in RUT, but unfortunately, you know, Everything's going up, except rut didn't go up on the day that we wanted it to. But anyway, we booked a small profit on that trade. And so we're out of that. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we added another iron duck in SPX. Did this one with 21 days to expiration. So let's take a look at SPX. We've now got two iron ducks in SPX. This is the one that we already had on. You can see price has moved all the way up here in our beak. So if we kind of like I was talking about before, if we move this to the uh, to this point here, so right where the beak ends and the snout of the duck starts, um, you know, you can see we still got about a 20% probability that price could get back in there. So into next week, if price continues higher and, uh, and we get down to about a 10% or less chance of price getting back to the duck head, we'll just go ahead and book that beak profit, which is in this case 110 bucks. Better than a sharp stick in the eye. And then the one from the alert that I just mentioned, the new one that we just put on, pretty close to where we put it on. Uh, we've got a, this one is out 12-7, uh, so 21 days to expiration. Oops, wrong date. Uh, December 7th. Uh, you can see we've got 89% probability of profit. So just holding on to this one. We'll hold this one close to, uh, close to expiration. So just laddering these in. Um, Let's see, next trade. Oh, the other thing I was going to mention on iron ducks, I've mentioned this before, but with implied volatility as low as it is, I mean, look at this, IV percentile of one, IV rank of one in SPX. So whenever this happens, that's why we're going out so far in time to that upper end of the range of where we like to put these on. You know, this one has 21 days to expiration, which is kind of at the far end of where we like to do this. And that's what you have to do when, um, when implied volatility gets so low, because otherwise, you know, you'll have a problem not getting, not being able to get that no risk to the upside, not being able to get that uh, a decent beak profit because implied volatility is so low. If implied volatility or when implied volatility spikes, you'll start seeing us put these on with even as low as one day to expiration 
or three days to expiration. And that's when that's when the duck hunting gets really fun. You get that implied volatility, you get a bigger credit, you get further away from price on your downside, and you can get shorter duration trades. But for now, with implied volatility so low, we, we're still able to put these on. We just have to ladder them out longer duration. And then and then you know you might have to adjust your your strikes a little bit off of what we what we initiate in the course, which is you know selling the 65 delta call and then buying one strike higher, selling the 15 delta put and buying the 10. You might you just have to tweak those one strike here, one strike there to make it set up so you have that no risk to the upside, a decent credit, and you know in a manageable uh, manageable amount of buying power. And then, of course, uh, you know, if you're in a smaller account and you don't want to be trading SPX, which in this case, you know, this is a 2300 almost $2,400 in buying power for this trade, you know, you can do SPY, which is one-tenth of the size, and there's no problem with that. Uh, next trade. So we opened, so we had closed out our double calendar, weekly double calendar in RUT, and then today we reopened another one. Did this with seven days in the front week, 14 in the back week. You know, in the in the weekly income course, we teach entering with seven in the front week and then the back week being more around 21. But again, with implied volatility as low as it is, getting a, discount, a decent risk reward just doesn't work out uh, with, you know, that uh, 21 days in the back in the back week. So we, we shorten that up and, and then um, I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go to rut... Here's where we're at. I, I I position this so we have a little bit more room to the downside. Plus, price has moved up a little bit since I put this on, and so this is what it'll look like. So we're gonna hold this up until next Friday potentially, and and try to you know st stick within that range and and book a profit in rut. If we get to a point where we're we're down about 400 bucks on the trade, which would be way out here beyond the expected move, you know, kind of in this area to the upside. And this area to the downside, you know, in that case, um, then we're going to take it off for a loss. But that's a pretty big range before we would take it off. And hopefully it stays within here. The other thing is if implied volatility expands, if we get some downside and we get a spike in implied volatility, these break evens will expand and our max profit will expand. So these are not these are not uh, the, the max profit and the break evens are not static on these calendar spreads. They are dynamic, meaning they can move. It's kind of like an accordion. They can move in and out, in and out, depending on implied volatility and price and, uh, and time to expiration. So that's the plan in rut. And then lastly, we did a closing trade in IYR. We had a iron condor in IYR, booked over 30% of max profit in just 10 days. So we're out of that one. So nice trade there. Uh, let's go back to the platform, look at some of our other positions. I mentioned 6B, ES, GC, gold. We've got an iron condor in gold. You can see price is hanging out right here. You got a little bit of profit. Could use a little bit more upside before we do anything there. Natty Gas, I mentioned. Bonds. Uh, bonds have been on a little bit of a wild ride. So here's, here's one piece. We've got two sets of short strangles on. You can see price is hanging out up here outside of our range. But after we've made an adjustment, remember crossing the break even, that doesn't really trigger an adjustment. What we do is we look at how much premium is left in the untested side. So in that case would be the calls. So you can see we've got, we've still got a little bit of premium left in those calls. So we're not looking to roll them down yet. Uh, but if price moves much lower uh, next week, then that's exactly what we'll do. We'll roll those calls in closer to price. Uh, the other one that we have on is a we added another strangle and we've got some profit here of a couple hundred bucks, uh, but just waiting for some more before we do anything on that piece. In wheat, we've got an iron condor. You can see prices hanging out well within range here, just waiting for some more time to pass on our wheat iron condor. Apple has been the leader of the pack for these strong stocks, and unfortunately, we've been short this one. But uh, so this is our long put vertical. You can see price is broken out of the range. So just looking for price to get back into range there. Uh, Amazon, did I mention that one? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got that iron duck price hanging out right here into the duck head. John Deere, we've got this long put vertical that we've been, uh, excuse me, short call vertical. Started out as a long put vertical. Um, and price is hanging out inside of our range here. So just holding on to that for some more downside. 
DIA. We've got these two sets of short call verticals that are also part of our short delta exposure. You can see price is just outside the range. Looking for some downside to get back into range there. I mentioned EWZ, IWM. Same story here, another long put vertical. Price is hanging out right here on the break even. Looking for some downside to benefit that. I mentioned the Qs, I mentioned RUT, SMH. So we've got a uh, short strangle on in here that's that's already been adjusted. You can see price is way out here. Um, I'm not looking to add to this just because implied volatility is super low at the zero on the percentile and rank. But so we'll just continue to manage this. And similar to what I've shown you in bonds, we're not ready to make an adjustment. If we look at the value of the premium in the puts, still a little bit of value of, of what they're at right now compared to what they would be at expiration. So we haven't made another adjustment yet. If price continues higher into next week in SMH, we will roll those puts up, uh, but nothing, nothing as of right now. And we're in December, so we've got Still got 35 days to expiration. So if we do roll those puts up, we'll stay in December. Uh, if it comes back into range, then, then we'll just keep it as is. I mentioned SPX, SPY. We've got an iron condor in SPY where price has moved higher. Uh, still within range here, but um, just barely, right? We're just inside our break even here. So we will be, you know, if price continues higher, we will look to take off our untested side, which would be this put vertical side, and uh, hope, hope you know, just give it a little bit of chance to see if price comes back into range. But at this point, nothing to do in SPY. I mentioned Tesla XLK, another long put vertical, price just outside of range, just waiting for that to uh, potentially get back if we have a pullback. And then lastly, XRT, we've got this, what was put on as a strangle, we adjusted it into a straddle. You can see price is hanging out right here. Uh, just waiting for some more theta to decay. If we get back to you know around the 43 price level, we'll be at a point of in the profit of, I don't know, 100 bucks or so. We might just end up taking it off. Uh, implied volatility is decent in there. I mean, we've got an IV percentile of 35. Not looking to add to this at, that, at this point, but um, that's where we're at with XRT, just kind of, playing the waiting game on that one. All right, so where are we at in our checklist here? We did all the current positions. I talked about earnings. Uh, I talked about iron ducks in low IV. Earnings next week. So we've got three decent candidates. There are going to be some others and just jump in the community. Uh, a lot of folks will be posting about some of the others, but we're kind of winding down to the end of, of all the big stocks announcing earnings. But we've got Home Depot, Lowe's, and Target. Uh, all of which are over $100 stocks, and so could be potential candidates for Iron Ducks uh, if they don't work out, and we'll be looking at those as we get closer to the earnings dates for those. Uh, if they're not uh, Iron Duck candidates, we will, you know, we can potentially look at trading some of our other earnings strategies around those, kind of a tight Iron Condor or short strangles or, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. We'll get, we'll get that premium uh, potential IV contraction after they announce earnings. So some type of net selling a premium, depending on your assumption. That is all I got. I uh, hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.